It's one of our oldest dreams to discover the fountain of youth, a mystical potion, the key to eternal life. Sure, that's fantasy. But what about living to the ripe old age of 150 or even 200? The experts say that's not only possible, it's just a matter of time. The scientific race is certainly on to find the drug that will help us live longer and stay healthy. No fuss, no effort. And the startling news is there's a good chance that race has already been won by an Australian who's claiming a stunning breakthrough in the quest to extend the human use-by date. A magic pill that will keep us forever young. It's the height of rudeness to divulge a woman's age. But when you look this good, why hide it? Sarah Grant is 58 and in amazing shape. She intends to stay that way with anti-aging workouts from trainer Sky Hunt. Well, to be honest, I think getting older for all of us is scary. Um, to watch ourselves age, you know, you can be walking along the street and suddenly you catch a glimpse of yourself in, a, in the window and you go, who's that old person? When I was going through these last night and I started looking and I thought, oh my God, and I did see the ageing process, you go, I look so young. As a model, looking good has been Sarah's stock in trade for 40 years. You've even got a Playboy cover in here. I know, I know, it's only the cover. <laughs> well, it was Incredibly, through diet and exercise, her measurements haven't changed since she was 16. But other changes are inevitable. Are your thoughts dominated by staying young? Oh, look, I think we go through stages, becoming a bit self-obsessed. Um, but you can go, I think you can go mad if you stay there, so you have to get past yourself. Just accept I'm going to be old, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen to us all. For trainer Sky Hunt and her generation of 30-somethings, being fabulous at 50 is just the beginning. I think I'd like to live to be about 100. I want to live longer. I want to be there for my friends and family, you know, so tummy muscles in nice and tight. The goal is to live a lot longer, look a lot younger and feel good doing it. How old do you want to live to? 125. I've actually visualised that. So you're planning to be around for quite a while to come? I'm, I'm here for the long haul. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> but until now, our journey from cradle to grave has been one of inevitable degeneration. As we age, cells decay and eventually stop regenerating, leaving us vulnerable to the diseases that strike in our twilight years, like cancer, heart disease and diabetes. But imagine if one pill could slow down that process a daily dose of longevity. Well, imagine no more. This is real and it's coming whether we like it or not. And as a society, as a world, we're going to have to get ready and deal with it. Australian scientist Dr David Sinclair has made an astounding discovery. Head of Harvard Medical School's anti-aging research team, he's developing what could turn out to be a genuine elixir of youth. Could this be the world's first anti-aging drug to hit the chemist shelves? That's it, and that's, that's where we're headed with this. And it's in trials, it's working in patients, and it could hit the market pretty soon. You haven't got a glass of water, have you? It's tempting, huh? <laughs> Very tempting. discovery in my lab and others around the world that there are genes that control the aging process. Who would have thought that it could be so simple? Tweak one little gene and organisms live twice as long. But the challenge was to find the trigger that would switch on that one little gene, the longevity gene. David discovered a magic molecule that did just that, resveratrol, found naturally in the skin of red grapes. He fed it to his lab mice for three years and hoped. And guess what? It worked. 
They were resistant to diseases, diabetes, cataracts, heart disease, osteoporosis, all that slowed down, and they lived 20% longer. And they could even run further on a treadmill. They were as though they'd been exercising, not just dieting. Marathon mice. Marathon mice. This was an added bonus that I hadn't even expected. So this was even beyond my dreams. Now the dream is to achieve the same spectacular results in humans, with initial tests predicting at least an extra 10 years of healthy life. Not surprisingly, the world's pharmaceutical giants have beaten a path to David's door. He sold his company for $750 million, and the drug is expected to be on the shelves within five years. This is one of the holy grails of the pharmaceutical industry. Well, there's enormous payoff at the end, isn't there? I mean, we're all getting old. Well, it's been estimated by economists that this drug could be worth upwards of $40 billion US a year, just in this country, the US. That's the uh, pathology. Uh... Oh, there's crazy. always been big money in fighting father time. Mm -hmm. Businesses like Alan Jovich's Life so, Extension um, Clinic on the Gold Coast market no, youth no, 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 with the popular read, uh, but controversial uh, hormone replacement therapy. When we're young, all our hormone levels are right up there at the, at the peak and uh, the kids are running around <laughs> and having fun. As you age, your hormone levels are going to uh, drop down. And this, to us, causes the ageing. So I say, if you want to maintain a level of a good level of uh, living, you've got to keep those hormones up. Alan, who's 64, and his wife Pauline, a very youthful 58, practice what they preach, downing a daily cocktail of supplements, hormones and vitamins at a cost of $16,000 a year. You both take one of these each every single day. Every day. It, I mean, it seems a lot. People say I must rattle. It is a lot. But some of those supplements, like human growth hormone and testosterone, have been linked to an increased risk in cancer. You both think it's a risk worth taking? I don't think it's a risk. It's stimulating the hormones that are already in your body, and it just gives them a little boost. You know, since I've been on it, I don't... I mean, I, people, get, people get old, but, I, you know, I feel fantastic. I really do. And I'm, and, and I'm you know, I, I'm really proud of myself. You'll be playing golf till you're at least 85, you reckon? Absolutely. And don't forget, there may be a little bit of sex on the side as well. It's my wife. <laughs> you got anything to say about this, Paul? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Probably wise to say nothing. Exactly. <laughs> well done. After two decades of studying the Okinawans, Canadian anthropologist Professor Craig Wilcox believes their longevity comes down to diet. What sort of diet do you have? Uh, she doesn't like butter. So no butter. And she also said that she, she loves sweet potatoes. She eats them every day. But it's not so much what they eat, it's how much. Traditionally, Okinawans eat small meals, consuming 40% less calories than we do. Well, one of the local customs is called hara hachibu. And what this means is it basically means eating until you're about 80% full. Hara hachibu. Right. So, so what, you never fill up? Well, you always leave a little bit of room in your stomach at the end of a meal. You don't stuff yourself. Whether they knew it or not, for centuries, the Okinawans were practicing what science now calls calorie restriction, the only proven way to extend life. Yeah, so we need about another 100 grams. Meredith Avril and Paul McLaughlin are dedicated followers of this long life diet. They weigh every calorie and eat just two meals a day, breakfast and lunch. Do you ever feel hungry though? Oh, yes. Well, hunger is actually a choice of the CR way. And we prefer to experience a little bit of hunger. Part of the reason is that the hunger hormones are great for our hearts. Right. Okay, so there's uh, some uh, barley and some vegetables. Hunger has the added benefit of switching on that elusive longevity gene that protects us from disease. 62-year-old Meredith and 60-year-old Paul are taking part in the first human trials on calorie restriction, 
to see how many extra years this extreme diet can give them. How long do you want to live? I would like to live as long as I feel good. I really hadn't thought of a number. But right now, things are going great, so I just hope it continues. Meredith, what about you? How old for you? Well, I have to tell you that for some reason, um, decades ago, I started planning my 125th birthday party. <laughs> 125. I guess this is the eternal optimist. I really admire people who can do calorie restriction. I tried it for about a week and gave up because I, I enjoy food. Not everyone can stomach Excellent. the calorie restriction diet. And that's where David Sinclair's magic little pill comes in. To long life. Providing all the benefits of calorie restriction and activating that longevity gene without the hunger pains. Are you taking it? Uh, well, the answer is yes. Uh, and the reason is that uh, it, if I'm really going to believe in my research, I want to really use myself as, as a guinea pig. How does your wife feel about that? She's taking it too. So are my parents. So we, we are believers. If his pill delivers, David's sure to win a lot more converts. Of course I'd take it. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? No one wants to grow older. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're going to grow older, then we do want to have quality of life. I think of what I'm doing as really the early days of flight. I'm the Wright brothers, but there's a long way to go, and I think 150 will be achievable one day. It does sound like a bit of a dream, doesn't it? It definitely does. And I have to pinch myself occasionally. It does sound too good to be true, um, but it's true. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.